Neil Before Blog presents Neil Before Pod. Hello, listeners. Recently, I was able to talk to Jeff Teravina, an actor who has done a lot of voice work as well as appearing in 12 Monkeys as Agent Stack and Dark Matters with Tenet Anders. We're able to talk about his career, gaming, and paleontology of all things. So, I hope you enjoy our discussion. Hi, Jeff. Thanks for joining us here. Pleasure to be here. It's good to have you on. So, how's your day going? We're busy. Uh, got a kid home from camp and uh, additions coming out my ears. And uh, it's always busy when you don't expect it. Yeah, I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> so um, looking at your IMDb page, you've done uh, a fair amount of acting. What kind of got you into that in the first place? I always wanted to be an actor. Uh, I love film and television so much right from the get-go, but I never saw it as a viable career, I guess. Um I did music for a lot of my life, which is another real stable job. Uh, but yeah, but uh, when that sort of petered out, I did a little bit of modeling. I got scouted for that, and it was fun. I got to meet girls and stand around with them, and I thought, okay, I'll do this for a while. But I landed a commercial, and it sort of got me thinking, and maybe I can take this more seriously. And it just sort of ballooned from there. But I loved it right from right from the beginning. Cool. Uh, do you miss being in a band? Because uh, I mean, I see on your Wikipedia page that uh, you've done a bit of that. Yeah, I did. It was really that consumed my life, and I loved it when I was doing it. Except for the industry part of it, it was very tough, and uh, it seemed we were always on the cusp of doing pretty good things, and then something would always happen. So maybe it was the universe telling me uh, to become an actor or do something <laughs> else. Yeah, it, it does seem there's a lot of kind of. I suppose there's industry politics everywhere, but music seems to be particularly rife with it certainly in the yeah. public consciousness I, i've said this before that when i got into film and television i was floored by how everybody from top to bottom of the pecking order all seemed to pull in the same direction they want to make a great product uh they work with you the stars when you're doing a scene with them will engage you even though it's not their turn to be on camera whereas in music i just didn't get that music you know when you worked with a, someone that you loved or grew up liking and got to open up for them. Sometimes you found that your sound checks, uh, after a good sound check, your your you know your time on stage would be all messed up because somebody's gone in there and messed with your settings. You think, wow, who could do this? I thought I loved these guys, you know. Yeah. So I, again, I always hate to paint everybody with the same brush because there's great people in music, but different different ball game in terms of how how things are done. Yeah, you're acting. You kind of do a lot of voice acting as well as physical acting. What's the What's the main difference as far as you're concerned and what are the kind of different challenges? Well, I mean, obviously the, the main thing is is that you're not being seen, so you could do it in your underwear, if you, if you <laughs> which I have actually. At home, I have a home studio, so um, it's not the... I've done it a few times where I've been pretty casual, but mm -hmm. in the studios, it's just like uh, whether you're doing a commercial voice or, or, or animation and that, you really have to find uh, a character... You really have to believe what you're reading. Um, you know, you, you really have to sort of make it come to life, just like they tell you to do in, in acting class sort of thing. They, you know, lift it off the page. They really, it's very minute things that make a good uh, voice thing work. So I, I guess you just, uh, after a while, you sort of hopefully figure it out and they keep booking you. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it's a big difference not always acting opposite the person that you're speaking to as well. Yeah, that can be. Yeah, for sure. I mean, with the video games and stuff in the past, too, um, we wouldn't always be you have your scripts and you do it. and You know what you're saying to the other person, but they're not there. But that's sort of changing, too, because we're now we're doing motion capture for most of it. Yeah. But I, I love doing voice work, though. It's I'm very, very lucky to be able to do it. It's a sort of a clique, cliquey kind of uh, place, at least in Canada. Mm -hmm. So is there any characters you have got your eye on voicing you know they've, you've got the DC animated films for instance they're always kind of recasting oh, different man. people I'm in the midst of uh, of going for my US visa so if we get a chance down the road I mean I can't even imagine how cool it would be to be on some of those things I've been lucky to do uh, Beyblade and, and Bakugan and things like that for animation which are really cool I mean my daughters uh, the boys that my daughters know love those shows so it's kind of funny when I say them on it, and they they don't seem to get it. It's like you can't be on it; those are real real things. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, it's so. Any specific characters you'd have your eyes on? Your eye on? 
Oh, uh, you know what? You got me on the spot there. I can't even think of anything. Just <laughs> any any of the any of the Marvel stuff in that. You know, just having an opportunity. But I mean, most of the stuff we know about is already being voiced. So hmm. it'd probably have to be something new. Fair enough. Um, and I see you're a big fan of paleontology as well. Have you been on any kind of high profile digs and ever find anything that was remarkable? I am. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm obsessed with uh, with history and, and paleontology is one branch of it. Um, yeah, I, I I'm a, like a amateur paleontologist, if you will. <laughs> I love going out uh, with my family, and actually, we have a lot of digging areas and the side of the road and sort of thing with limestone uh, outcrops, outcroppings. Uh, you can find amazing things. We found everything from sea scorpions, uh, eurypterids, they're called, to uh, you know, amazing trilobites. And around here, we had a sea that was a Nordovician sea about 350 to 400 million years ago. You're, you're digging up some of the first complex life, like first jaws, first eyes, that yeah. sort of thing. So, you know, when you pull that thing out of the rock, it, you know, nobody's touched that in hundreds of millions of years. It's incredible. And um, I mean, I'd love to get out on a dinosaur dig, that kind of thing as well. But that's something I always dreamed about. We'd hit it big, and I'd be out racing cars on the weekend, or else going to dinosaur digs out in the middle of the sweltering desert. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Some people would always say you're crazy. You'd be out there for two days and hate it, but I don't <laughs> think so. I don't know. I just love that stuff, and I love, like I said, history. My favorite magazine is BBC History Magazine. I I get it every month, so I salivate when that comes in. <laughs> cool. And then, oh, big time. <laughs> so obviously you're on TV, um, but what do you watch when you're not, you know, acting? Well, that's one of the cool things is that uh, I'm a fan of a lot of different styles and genres. So, I mean, I've, I've watched a lot of uh, Joe's creations there with Stargate and that and getting to work with these people mm. is, a, is a real treat. I can say that I have a something coming up on The Expanse. I can't say anything about it, but just that I'm on it. But again, I'm a huge fan. 12 Monkeys, I was a huge fan before I got to go on it. And then you're working with these people and... And they all turn out to be super nice too, which is great, you know. But I, I was like super fanboy when I got on those sets that I actually got to do it. But I love those shows. I love sci-fi, um, uh, uh, Homeland, or or the Detour. I can't stop watching right now. It's one of the funniest shows I've ever seen. Um, House of Cards, Game of Thrones, you name it. We're, we live in such an amazing time for television and choice. There's not enough time in the day to watch it all. Yeah, it's a, especially writing about it, I have to kind of make tough choices and what shows yeah. I'm going to cover. You know, I tend to stick with the more uh, nerdy stuff like The Flash but, and so on. Cause, um, yeah, but what a great thing for you place. to have that choice because you've yeah. got so much there, you know? Yeah, it's kind of at the point where it's uh, instead of, I wish I could see this, it's now I've not seen it yet. And, you know, it's out there and you can't, you can watch it, but you can't watch it because there's not enough time. It's crazy. No. There's not, and that's the thing. I, I've got a, a young daughter, so obviously I try to spend as much time with her, and by the time she gets to sleep, I try to sneak in a few things, and then I'm done. <laughs> so, Yeah, not enough hours in the day, as they say. Nope. So, yeah. And plus, my video game addiction doesn't help, so. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a time suck, it certainly is. <laughs> mm-hmm. So what games do you play, and, and what console? Uh, I play on the, the PS4 right now, and the, and the 3 sometimes, but I'm sort of semi-addicted to Battlefield... Uh, I, I love that, and I'm in a clan, I have to admit. <laughs> but also, I love Fallout. Uh, best games I ever played were, were Bioshock games and uh, The Last of Us, which I believe they're making movies about a lot of these. So yeah, they're, I'm, they're trying, yeah. I would kill to be some of those characters. <laughs> uh, some of the some of the folks on Dark Matter actually were, were uh, played characters on the Bioshock games. And when I first met them, I was already, you know, Roger Cross, I've seen in everything under the sun. So again, you're like, wow, I'm working with Roger Cross. Then I read on his bio that he had done stuff on Bioshock, and suddenly he, he was elevated to even a greater status. <laughs> cool. Uh, in terms of films, what um, what do you try and get to see if you get the chance to go at the cinema or catch them on demand or whatever? Um, I'm all over the map again. It just depends on the mood I'm in, but I love... Uh, you know, good serious films, that sort of thing. The problem again, though, is just re- lately I haven't had the time. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's we we do watch a lot of TV because you can watch an hour here or half an hour there, and then you're not flaking out because again, auditions come and your whole world shuts down. I'm down in the basement uh, talking to myself for hours on end, <laughs> trying to get stuff going. So yeah. 
it's easier to sort of get connected to a show I find these days than actually spending you know ninety minutes, two hours on a on a film. Yeah, it must be um must be a bit challenging working during the summer when all the big films are coming out as well. Yeah, um, but I mean, well, thankfully you know I've got a, a nice little home theater set up, and to be honest with you, I prefer uh, watching the stuff at home. Anyways, I've got a three D TV I've vested in and. <laughs> A nice stereo system, and I don't have anybody talking and eating popcorn next to me. <laughs> yeah. I took my daughter to go see uh, uh, the latest Pixar film the other night. I, I knew it was a kid's film, but still, people just talked like crazy for yeah. the whole film. And if that was a serious film, I would have been losing my mind. So, Yeah, I was lucky enough to see Finding Dory at the film festival, so I had a pretty polite audience. Nice little little difference there, yeah. yeah. I mean, I knew it was a kid's film, so I, I kind of was good with it. But if it, had, you know, if it was some sort of serious film you you're really looking forward to, and people are chomping away and talking about, you know, changing their tire or whatever the heck she was talking <laughs> about. Yeah, but you it is to, what it is. You have to wonder why people choose then to bring. I have in. no idea. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it's even scary to me, or not scary is the word, but sad to me. I, I live tweet and I love doing it because I love interacting with fans. It's it just the fact that I have a fan is is a is a cool thing for me. Mm-hmm. But I gotta admit, I feel bad for like the cinematographers and stuff like that who have spent hours trying to light something, and you know people aren't really paying attention or else they're you know they're looking at some of these media from their smartphone and that you think yeah. wow like the work that goes in to make this beautiful and sound good and you know and it's just being played through an iPhone speaker. <laughs> It's kind of sad, but hopefully people watch it maybe more than once and they'll get the whole, the full uh, range of things that are meant for them. Yeah. yeah, you can only hope. Yeah, I mean, when I'm live tweeting, I, I'm immediately watching it again because I want to see everything that's going on. Yeah. So before we get on to Dark Matter, uh, I actually remember you from Hollywoodland, weirdly. Um, oh my where, God, where really? You, yeah, where you played an auditioning actor. Like, how realistic was that in terms of you know, that's uh, funny <laughs> well you know that was a weird experience um i was really new to everything so i couldn't believe that i was going to work with that director alan coulter i mean mm-hmm. he did the sopranos and all this stuff this is a heavyweight and i i had a scheduling thing so i almost didn't do it and then i did it and the scene is actually a lot longer and i'm in it a lot more but unfortunately ben's uh, affleck who's the main character in it a lot of his got stuff got cut and mine did as well. Mm. And of course I went to the movie with my family. <laughs> it was, it was just such a letdown. I, I, I just felt like dying inside cause you know, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be on, where's all my stuff. So yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm there, but I'm not really there. It's, I know it happens now, but it was a, it was a real kick in the gut that day. Yeah. I suppose they don't tell you how much they're cutting as well after the. Well, no, it was just funny because he really, like, I was surprised because he really wanted me for this role. He said I had the perfect look for what they wanted to do when he loved my audition because I almost didn't do it. And uh, I thought, okay, we're we're on Easy Street now. And, of course, you see the movie and it's like, where the heck am I? (laughs) What's going on here? Well, at least least I got my credits and stuff. (laughs) Yeah. So on to Dark Matter since that's the the big thing at the moment. Yeah. I mean, the the big question is: Is Anders still alive? That might you might not be allowed to say, but and if he is, how is he going to deal with being shot by his friend and colleague over just a bunch of criminals? That's an amazing question, but uh, only only the Baron Destructo knows that one. <laughs> um, I'm I'm uh, I'd love to know what's uh, what's going on in Joe's uh, head for that stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, they always say I, I've read interviews actually where he said that. Uh, you know, we didn't see a body and we didn't see a headshot, so you never know. So <laughs> I, I, I just wait for the phone to ring and, and uh, do a lot of hoping and see you know wishing back. on things. Yeah. Well, I, 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 it's it's by far my best experience. Uh, I, I love playing Anders, and uh, there's such a great group of people. Um, Joe and everybody made me feel so welcome, Ivan. You know, you name it. So mm. if I get to go back on, I'll be doing a happy dance for sure. <laughs> But I guess we'll see what what uh, they have planned. Hmm. Yeah, you, you mentioned the whole the way he teases people. Um, it's well known that he kept secrets even from the actors who might have been playing the traitor in season one. So, well, yeah, I was a huge part of that, which was funny because when we did all the wardrobe fittings and everything, I had to go in at secret times. Uh, I wasn't on the call sheets, so nobody knew that I was coming. Mm-hmm. Um, they really, Joe really wanted it to be a secret, which is so funny because. What happened was scheduling 
wasn't, I guess, didn't have everything down 100%. So they said, bring him in um, at like 9.30 in the morning. And I sat in that trailer till I think around 10.15 at night um, because I was sequestered. They, they, if they let me out, they were afraid that uh, someone would see me, especially Roger, who's funny enough, his trailer was next to mine. Mm. So I could hear him talking on the phone and stuff. <laughs> and, you know, I, I realized he's, if he recognizes my voice, you know, the gig is up. So I was quiet and I sat there and read and whatever else I did all day waiting to, to get out there. Mm. So you got to know a little bit more than everyone else before it all happened. Yeah, it was funny. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't know much more. I just knew that uh, what was going to happen and and uh, we were going to do our little, uh, what they call it, a perp walk there. So yeah. I just bided my time and waited to come out. But it was great. It was They, they were in such good spirits. And I think it was one of the last scenes they shot that season. So mm. and I got a chance to meet a lot of people and that. So. Yeah. Must be, um, must be interesting to sort of react realistically to these kind of reveals without, you know, knowing ahead of time. Yeah, and... You know that's the thing too for me as a fan of the show. It, it's uh, it's 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 cool for me as well. You know what I mean? Like I actually got to see what was going on there sort of ahead of time. I felt like I was a VIP guy or something. Yeah. But again, after doing episode eight, um, I'd I'd watched the show from the beginning anyways. But uh, you know, because I, I got sucked into the plots as well, so it was cool for me. Hmm. So. Um Obviously, that you've got Dark Matter, Killjoys, and Continuum that are all kind of Canadian-made and produced shows, and all three of them have a common theme where large corporations are the bad guys. Is yeah, that, it's funny. Is that kind of something in Canadian society that where people are wary of big businesses? Um, you know, kind of I don't the, know. If, is that the demon of the moment, so to speak? I think it's a realistic look at a future that's, in some ways, is already here. I mean look at the American political system right now with the lobbyists. I mean, anybody who thinks uh, it's uh, fully democratic doesn't realize how much power those lobbies have. And yeah. that's the corporations, right? It's it's there now. Now, maybe not in the scale that you're seeing on Dark Matter and that, but, uh, you know, it's a slippery slope. How much more power do they have? And what at what point do they stop having to sort of hide it and cloak it the way they do? Hmm. When it just becomes the norm where, you know, a Mike and these different corporations are almost like government. So, yeah, I mean, it's maybe these Joe and, and the other writers are just seeing something that the writing's on the wall. I hope yeah. not. <laughs> it, it just, um, it does seem to be kind of unique to certainly the Canadian shows I've seen um, where, you know, the, the big corporations are the, the villains. I think in, in American shows, it tends to, it tends to be there, but it's more in the background, but certainly in, and certainly, three shows I mentioned. It's all about, that's who controls everything. It's quite interesting. yeah. Maybe maybe uh, I mean being next to such a, a giant too. You know, we're so heavily influenced, and and uh, so much of what we do is uh, around the the American sphere. And let's face it, America's corporations are massive. Uh, yeah. So you know, we we do we we're in their gravity all the time. So maybe it just comes across that way. I don't know. Yeah, See, I, I threw a space analogy. I don't know whether it worked or not, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's interesting that... Uh, it's just interesting that it keeps coming up, so... Uh, I'm just I know, gonna... it probably will keep coming up, I, yeah. honestly, because I, I I'm just trying to think there was something else recently. And The, the Expanse as well. Um, I don't know if you follow that show, but, again, uh, lots of stuff with corporations in The Expanse as well. Yeah. So, yeah, they're all taking over. It's a warning of the future. <laughs> yeah, um, this is another one that you might not know, but is there more to see of the the Procyon insurrection? And is your character's cover still in place, whether he's you know, alive or not? I don't know. Um, again, I I'm so limited at what I can say, but I can honestly tell you right now, uh, I loved uh, Andrew Jackson, the actor who played the general. He's a he's a friend of mine. He's a great actor, and uh, I don't know. Actually, I haven't talked to him in a while. I don't know if he is back on. I would love to see more of that. I'd, I'd love to see more of what happened with that whole thing. And maybe, you know, I can understand more about Anders as well, but uh, I guess we'll see. They they basically gave me my script, and then uh, whatever else on the other episodes is, uh, is a mystery to me. <laughs> so I, I, as a fan, I'm waiting too. Like, hopefully, uh, hopefully we will see something. That's quite good. It means you can be in the show and watch the show at the same time. Well, the exactly, right? Yeah. I, honestly, like, I... I 
because like I said, Dark Matter was a new show. I sort of fell into it right from the beginning because I I was on. I knew I would be on it that season, and I watched it. But like like a lot of these shows, like Twelve Monkeys, the first season I watched just because I, I wanted to see it, and I ended up loving it. Hmm. So w- when you actually get on it and you think, man, I'm I'm part of this, even if it's a small thing. It's uh, like I'm very proud to to be on these shows, hmm. yeah, big, large role, whatever. It's uh, just or small. I'm happy to do it. Yeah. And um, in terms of the the decision that uh, Anders and Six had to make about their corrupt employer, um, do you feel for the Anders situation, or would you have gone with what Six did? Um, like just you my, personally. Yeah, <laughs> my personal feeling is that uh, is that obviously these guys were close. Um, you know, they've been through a lot together. Especially you look at Deep Cover, hmm. and I believe that Anders really does care about about Six. So. I think in my personal thing, I would have gone. Now, here's the thing. And this is where uh, Joe knows more than anybody. You could tell that Anders had a real struggle with it. And there may be a really good reason why he can't go. Mm-hmm. So um, that's all I can really say about it. But, uh, you know, maybe Anders wanted to go desperately. Maybe he thought that it was the right thing to do. But sometimes there's anchors that stop people from doing things that they want to do. So. Yeah, that's an interesting insight. Uh, did you read any of the comics that that preceded it, uh, and were the other actors encouraged to read its background material, or just going think, blind, so to speak? I think I remember an interview with a couple of them saying some did and some didn't. In my case, I didn't, but uh, I did when I was sequestered. <laughs> <laughs> I read, I read them all. I read some of them twice because I was running out of things to read. And my uh, my internet was going down, so. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it was just interesting to see, you know, because obviously they exist and um, it'd be interesting to, if they were required reading or not, but it doesn't seem like they were. So, Yeah, some I've noticed that with other things too. So I know that uh, it helps build a character sometimes, but other people will say that it doesn't because they want to make it their own and, you know, all they need is the basics of what they have to do and the motivations and that, and then they'll they'll work around it. I, mm. I'm either way. I don't, I don't have a formula for that. Whatever works on, at the day sort of yeah. thing for me. So what do you think's next for you? You already mentioned The, the Expanse. Um, what other shows are you trying to get into or would you like to appear on? Well, there's, there's so many, and that's the thing. Um, you know, I always point out I'm certainly no superstar or anything like that, so... We get auditions, we do the best we can, and uh, I just hope that more opportunities come up. I can say that I, I auditioned for something last week that I'm on hold for. Right. So I have every digit in my body uh, crossed right now because it's a, it's a, uh, what do you call it, a recurring role again on a great show, yeah. and it shoots uh, far away. So it'll be exciting to do that as well. I just, uh, I'm waiting for the phone, phone to ring, <laughs> getting desperate. Well, fingers crossed for you that that's, it'll, it'll come through. That's the acting world, though. I mean, yeah. I, I've been very fortunate because, uh, you know, between acting gigs, I work quite a bit in voice, and, mm-hmm. it, and it's good pay, that sort of thing. So I've uh, managed to make a good career in the last 13 years of it. But, you know, you're always you're always hoping that some good opportunity is going to come up. And like I said, when Dark Matter came up, I felt that it raised my game in a huge way. Uh, you know the way the casting directors see you, that sort of thing. I had some great meaty scenes, so mm. it, it's been a treat. You know, and then getting to work with Terry and the gang at Twelve Monkeys helps and everything else. So, yeah, I only really got one last question. Uh, it's one we ask everybody because we do the kind of comic book thing. So, I ask what superpower some people would have and why. Everyone, um, <laughs> I would love to be in, able to be invisible. <laughs> It's quite a popular one. Yeah, I, I figure it's probably a good one. Yeah, <laughs> for, for all different. You could cause. Yeah, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, if in the superhero way, I'd love to be able to do some vengeance and stuff in the world. But at the same point, <laughs> I'd love to be able to. I don't know all kinds of crazy things. Plus, you could be, be easy to be rich if you were uh, you could get up to all sorts <laughs> of mischief. So yeah, invisible. I think would be a pretty well, not all the time, but. <laughs> Turn it off and on. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That would be a really good, that's something to lay around and fantasize about kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to to imagine the possibilities. And I guess that's why we all love science fiction. There was a great show in the 70s, I remember. Uh, it was The Invisible Man. It was uh, some English actor, actually, that was in it. I 
I forget. But yeah, I, forget I, I love I love that show. I remember thinking that, that as a kid, you know, how amazing would that be? <laughs> yeah, and then um, who knows? Maybe one day you'll get to be on something where you have a superpower of some sort. Be- yeah, I keep yeah. hoping. I mean, the, the Flash is always filming Arrow, all those ones. So, well, the, I think the Flash actually. I did an edition at Vancouver for that last oh. year, and uh, I was pretty pumped if I had got that role. As you probably know, I didn't, but <laughs> but I'm hoping that I'll get another shot. It's, yeah. a, it's a good show too. I've watched a lot of episodes as well, so very well done. So we'll see. Hopefully, maybe uh, Blind Spots, another show I'd love to do. Martin Giro from uh, mm-hmm. Dark Matter first season, actually. He's he's the showrunner of that one. So, all right, Martin, see. if you hear that one, <laughs> <laughs> so you've got an in already. <laughs> well, I don't know. Hopefully, with the US visa, it might help. Since I don't know if I can legally work down there yet, but mm. if they come up here. Who knows? Yeah. Well, it's, um, it's been great talking to you, and uh, thanks very much for your time. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so um, much for having me. Not a problem. Any time. It's been a, uh, it's been good. And uh, thanks very much for all the support on Twitter that you've given by retweeting and and reading the the reviews as well. It's been it's been great. Not and, my pleasure. I know Aaron, who writes the Dark Matter ones, has really appreciated um, some feedback from people who are involved in the show. And, um, he's heavily into the show as well, so uh, obviously from his reviews. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah. I know. Um, so thanks very much, and uh, no problem. Good luck with all your auditions and future projects and all that stuff. Yeah, you too. And like I said, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. No problem. It's my pleasure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. So that was my discussion with Jeff Teravine. I hope you enjoyed it, and will join us for the next Neil Before Pod interview segment.